Hello again and welcome to part 4 and sorry for the delay between the videos here we look at the ice protection, air conditioning and pressurisation systems for the aircraft obviously it's very important to keep the leading edge of the wings free of ice and the horizontal stabiliser as well as these are the surfaces that generate the vast majority of aircraft lift to keep these surfaces clear the Q400 is fitted with de-icing boots fed from bleed air from the engines which will inflate and deflate to prevent ice accumulation the de-icing boots are the black surfaces that you can see on the leading edge of the wing and also the horizontal and vertical stabilizers other vital parts of the aircraft have anti-ice protection as well these include the propeller blade edges which are warmed by AC electrically powered heating elements also the lips covering the engine intakes the captain, first officers and standby pitot stand angle of attack vanes and the windshield and side windows the aircraft has an ice detection system with two detection probes on the front of the fuselage if ice is, is detected an ice detected message will show on the engine display just below the static air temperature indication this is a prompt to energize the anti-icing system it is also policy to use the anti-icing system in conditions of visible moisture that is to say precipitation, cloud, mist or fog below 6 degrees Celsius when using the anti-icing system the increase reference speed switch should also be selected this will be accompanied by an increase reference speed legend shown on the engine display this ensures that the stall protection system will increase the stall reference speeds for flying in icing conditions the airframe de-icing can be controlled manually or automatically when the airframe mode select switch is in slow or fast the timer and monitor unit will start an automatic cycle through each of the various anti-icing boots each cycle lasting one minute in fast mode or three minutes in slow mode in manual mode one manually selects the inflation sequence and each selection should be held until the corresponding position lights have illuminated The boot air switch is kept in the normal position. This interconnects the bleed systems. The ISO position closes the isolator shutoff valve and isolates the left and right bleed air systems in the event of a leak or other malfunction. In the ISO position, the de-icing boots must be selected in manual mode. The engine intake flanges are heated to ensure ice doesn't form around the engine inlets the intake flange heat is energized whenever the engine intake switches are selected and in the open position as they are now and the outside air temperature is below 15 degrees celsius incidentally the engine intake switches should always be selected open for all flying operations so as to avoid foreign object ingestion into the core of the engine the pitot-static switches energize the pitot-static AC electrical heaters which are always selected prior to entering the runway to, to ensure that the various probes and vanes remain free of ice during flight we also have a windshield wiper function to maintain visibility in rain conditions the captain's side window heat is located here
the side window heat function which should always be used in flight to maintain window durability in low outside air temperatures. Because the Q400 is certified to fly at high altitudes where the outside air temperature and densities are inhospitable to life, we have to generate an artificial climate within the cabin and flight deck to maintain passenger and crew safety and comfort. This is achieved by bleed air taken from the engines or the auxiliary power unit if we're on the ground, temperature controlling and dehumidifying this air and then distributing it into the flight deck and cabin through packs as they're known. The accumulation of conditioned air increases the cabin pressure ensuring pace passenger safety and comfort in the higher altitudes. If the aircraft needs to depressurize then an outflow valve will open and jettison extraneous air overboard. This is, in done, this is done entirely automatically and monitored via the pressurization gauges. Though the system can be manually overridden if required. The cabin and flight deck temperatures can be controlled using the rotary switches on the air conditioning panel. If set to FA, the cabin temperature will be controlled by the cabin crew. In normal operation, the pack switches remain in the auto position, in which the environmental control system automatically calculates the required duct temperature for the selected cabin temperature. Manual mode will only be used in the event of a malfunction, and if selected, flight deck and cabin temperatures will have to be constantly monitored and adjusted for safety and comfort. The master switches for the engine bleeds are located here. It's important to make sure both the engine bleeds and the APU bleed are deselected prior to engine start. After engine start the engine bleeds must be selected to the on position. Because bleed air drains powers from the engines there is a rotary bleed flow selector that allows a reduction or increase of flow to the air conditioning system as required. For takeoff and landing, the phases of flight where engine power is obviously most critical, the bleed flow should be selected to minimum. At thrust reduction altitude, which is usually a, a standard figure of a thousand feet uh, above ground level, the bleeds can then be moved to norm or to max if required. Max may be used if there's a very high passenger load to cool the cabin quickly but the resultant power and fuel penalty has to be considered. Norm is usually selected in flight. In N-top or M-top, that is to say the engine takeoff power settings, selection of bleeds from min to norm will prompt an amber bleed indication on the engine display. It's actually standard procedure to select bleeds to norm and verify the amber indication before selecting climb power after takeoff. And that is to ensure that the bleed flow has increased successfully in preparation for the climb. Once the climb power has been selected with the bleed flow selector in normal or maximum, the bleed indication will turn from amber to white. The recirculation fan induces cabin air through a filter before mixing it with pack conditioned air which is redistributed then back into the cabin. This will only operate at low speed if one pack is turned off. The research fan can be left on for all phases of flight. The gauge in the centre of the panel allows for the measurement of the cabin and flight deck duct temperatures as well as the actual temperature of the cabin itself. This should be monitored carefully if the packs are in manual mode. The pressurization panel allows the selection of the destination landing elevation above sea level. This selection is made prior to departure and ensures that the pressurization system can automatically schedule its depressurization so that the system is fully depressurized by the time the aircraft 
gets onto the ground at its destination airport. The mode selector. The mode selector is left in the auto mode for normal operations but can be manually overridden using the manual position in the event of a malfunction. When in manual mode the pilot uses the outflow valve selector to pressurize by closing or depressurize by opening the outflow valve. The dump function opens the aft outflow valve completely so as to release all cabin pressure. When in manual mode the manual diff selector allows the increase or decrease of cabin pressure as required. The pressurization gauges themselves show the differential pressure that is to say the difference between inside and outside pressures the cabin altitude and the rate of pressurization or depressurization expressed in feet per minute. The top scale can also be used as a guide for when the pressurization system is in manual mode. A forward outflow valve selector is located on the first officer's side panel and can be fully opened in the event of an emergency.